Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. You know, I, I've had some pretty harsh words to say about some Frank Miller comics lately. Um, some of the new stuff that's come out, like uh, Superman Year One, really wasn't my cup of tea, especially when I stack it up against those classic works by Miller that we we all know and love, right? Um, so that's why uh, I was it was kind of with like mixed feelings when I heard about. Dark Knight Returns, The Golden Child. Written by Frank Miller with art, though, by Rafael Grandpa, a Brazilian artist who uh, has got a really unique and interesting style. So uh, l let's see. Can we can we Frank Miller redeem himself with The Golden Child? Let's find out today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back. Today, uh, let's talk about The Dark Knight Returns, The Golden Child by Frank Miller and Raphael Grandpa. Um, this is the cover uh, that, that I purchased, and you'll notice it's DC Black Label, right? Which, uh, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first Black Label book that's not in the oversized Prestige Plus format. This is just a prestige format comic like the original uh batman the dark knight returns this is a image that i had seen solicited for this comic and um i think is a better cover this is probably a variant cover i think and this just is one of several reasons why i think having variant covers is so silly pick the best image that will sell this book and put it on the cover i think it's this image not this image but then again i bought this image so uh, the other image that's been uh, in the headlines lately has been this, Future is Young. This is a, um, uh, a promotional poster, and uh, this caused a lot of controversy. I have another video about it. Maybe I'll link to it over there. And uh, uh, the Chinese government really did not appreciate this. They viewed it as being in support of the Hong Kong protesters. And I said, well, you know, you've got this one image. It's out of context. Can you really say that this is a comic uh, supporting protesters. I don't know yet till I see it. Well, now I've seen it, and now I know, right? And, uh, well, I can sit here talking about it. Or, you know, why did I spend a million dollars on a million-dollar comics cam if we're just going to sit here in the Batcave? Let's go take a look. <laughs> Great. Uh, Dark Knight Returns the Golden Child. I'm going to switch off my uh, regular camera here because, you know, prestige format like graphic novels, they don't, won't really lay flat. I feel like one of the features of a floppy comic book that's really great that's missing these days is the ability to just like sit it down and lie it flat and, and look at the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm breaking the spine. Yeah, people are going to say something about that. I don't care. This is the sacrifice I make for you. The Golden Child. Now, I'm going to be upfront about this. I didn't read DK3 yet. I have all nine issues sitting here. I've gone through it. I've tried to read it s several times. I just can't bring myself. After some of the disappointment with Dark Knight uh, 2, I, I, I found it really hard to go back to something like The Dark Knight Returns, which is such a personal favorite of mine. Boo-hoo. So, um, but I decided I'm, this is a one-shot comic. I'm going to treat it that way. I'm going to review it that way. So I'm going to look at this with fresh eyes, as some of you might. If you haven't read uh, uh, anything since Dark Knight Returns by Miller with Batman, this is for you. So we begin. This is the golden child in question. And I guess it's been established in the Dark Knight 2 book that uh, Clark Kent has ha been married to Wonder Woman and has two children. He's got Lara Kent and Jonathan Kent. Of course, this might be confusing to some people who know there's already a Jonathan Kent in now in DC Comics, and they've just convoluted the whole Superman and Super Sons thing so much that I don't really, I don't care. Anyway, this is the Millerverse, right? It's Miller time, so we're gonna, um, this is all that matters. And basically, Lara Kent, they've both got superpowers, but the kid is like just something off the charts. The kid is uh, uh, super, super, super powerful and has powers like nobody ever dreamt of. Basically, Lara is like 
has all Superman's powers, Jonathan Kent's got something more. But it's not really ever quite specified, but we'll get to see some stuff happen. Um, anyway, I, I first want to point out the beautiful art by Raphael Grandpa. Actually, you know, I'm going to switch for a second here into uh, into this view and just look at some of these um, images from Mesmo Delivery Service. This was the book uh, that made him popular. And you can see right away, the guy's got a really cool style. Um, very readable. Not just fun to look at, but like very readable in terms of storytelling and comics and everything else. This guy is like a fully formed talent in the world of comics. So um, I just wanted to point that out. Back to Batman. Um, so we can see, you know, it's beautiful to look at every single page. You know, I view this guy, um, you know, if I was to say who's his style most reminds me of, it's going to be a combination of like maybe Frank Quitely meets Paul Pope and maybe with a little bit of Dave Cooper thrown in for the texturing, if you will, all this wrinkly, rumply stuff. Um, reminds me of Dave Cooper. Anyway, real character and comical. What we can see here is there's a there's a there's a, an election that's going on. And there's a huge protest, and we it's not hard to guess what's going on here, right? We've got the anti-establishment protesters being attacked by this gang of jokers, literal jokers, right? All in clown and joker masks. There is not any more like okay, not him again. Right, so this is like the re-election of who, right? Okay, so this is obviously written in protest to that somewhat. Certainly the imagery is. Um, and, and the clowns are up to no good, so in chaos and causing damage and stuff. And here comes uh, Batwoman, who is who was Robin from Dark Knight Returns, right? Carrie Kelly. And that's not really spelled out here, but what we're seeing is that... Uh, she comes in and she's trying to be as scary as possible because that's what that's how Bruce Wayne taught her to be. So she's coming in and she's got and she's got crazy biological weapons that she's made that like Batman Bruce Wayne didn't really think was worth using, but you know he's not she's not Bruce Wayne. So anyway, she's attacking the clowns, um, and there's a giant battle with the clowns that is really fun to look at. Beautiful artwork. This is. Um, you know, almost maybe, who do I also want to say? It's almost Jeff Darrow-ish sometimes, especially these big crowd scenes. Ironically, this is artwork work that really would have benefited from the Prestige Plus format, right? If you're going to have these big pages, I want to see detailed artwork like this. I don't need to see John Romita Jr.'s super spare lines on at giant size. In fact, they work better reproduced at a smaller size, in my opinion. However, probably when this one was started, since since the Prestige Plus is not just a different size, not just a, it's not just a larger comic book, it's a different aspect ratio. It's a wider page. Um, so it has to be drawn differently on different pages. Anyway, now we're introduced to the real crux of the story, I guess, which is the, the Joker is working with dark side to run this election and guess whose side they're on it's not really going to be too hard to guess whose side they're on um and, and we get some but we get to look at pretty pictures like this right this is beautiful stuff this artwork especially some of these pages and the way these are inked and drawn the silhouettes and the inking here very much reminds me of frank miller like as Frank Miller might have drawn it once or without being like a clone of it. It's just definitely feels a little bit like him. Some of the pages are a little bit varying. Like this page with the Joker here, I feel is, I don't really like this version of the Joker uh, too much. But what I do love is Grandpa's dark side, right? His like, his craggly kind of drawing style is perfect for dark side. And that's good because we get to see a lot of dark side in this book. Basically, this whole thing devolves into just a giant battle between dark side and the super kids and and Batwoman. And sometimes dark side's just able to like mentally control everybody, I guess except the Kents. And then other times they, you know, she's coming he's coming after him with the omega effect and they're able to turn the omega effect 
back against him. Jonathan Kent's able to like hold him in place. And they and and the Omega beams, you know, they 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 chase people around. So she, Lara is able to chase him back, and boom, Dark Side is hit by the Omega effect. That's something we've never seen before. That's a very fanboy moment. I'll give Frank Miller credit for like probably something he's always wanted to see or maybe thought about or I don't know. It's fun. Um, anyway, there's there now there's a giant crater and but something is wrong. Something is happening. It's starting to rain and it's raining blood. And as we pull back in reality, Dark Side was not destroyed. But what? He was made more powerful than ever. There is a lot of stuff in this book like this where it's just from the point of view of somebody like very POV, Frank Miller, like I am all powerfulness. I am the star. I am that star. Blah, 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 blah. A lot of stuff that's filling up pages and pages and pages that grandpa is able to fill full of interesting, cool looking stuff. Especially when we get a page like this. Here's a beautiful dark side hero shot, glory shot, whatever you want to call it. Um, kind of stuff that I was hoping to see in a book like this uh, out of Grandpa. But then we've got like the Joker stuff and, and, and Batwoman. Like there's a car chase that's ongoing and it, just, it goes and we get a, some pretty pictures like this. Again, this is a Miller-esque page, right? even down to some of this inking and but the posing and everything else. And and it's fun comics to read for sure and look at. I really like I enjoy this. Um, but it doesn't make a ton of sense. It reads kind of like a fever dream. And it keeps going on. Here's more of this chase of the Jokers. They go into one of the arcades, right? Remember from Dark Knight Returns they had arcades everywhere? Well, that was written in the 80s. We don't really have arcades anymore, but in the Dark Knight universe they still got them. So great, cool callback to that. But what's happening here? It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. Except that uh, Batgirl kicks some ass. Batwoman kicks ass. Uh, and comes out of it and somehow is able to... We get a little speech from, from, from the president. Obviously, there's no attempts to conceal who this is. And, and, and actually, I like this. This does harken back to Dark Knight Returns where Ronald Reagan was still the president even in the future uh but that was the current day president when when dark knight returns came out so okay bring in the current political scene and why wouldn't you all this protesting and all this stuff i think is fair game for um an overdue for commentary i mean some of it was done in the batman in the nolan batman movies the last one in particular um so it's been looked at a little bit before, but this is through the eyes of Frank Miller, so I'm willing to give it a chance to see his unique vision. Let's continue. Okay, Dark, Hor uh, Dark Side is dead. Well, he was dead. No, he's still not dead. He's back, and so they're going to fight more. Like, okay, that Omega Beam thing the first time didn't work, so what is going to work? What's going to work is they're going to bring in the golden child, the boy, and he's going to hit him. Not with, man, he doesn't have heat vision. He ha releases a new power. He releases his neutron vision. Boo. And, and apparently this is what it takes. No, even that was not enough. Yeah, no. Now he can just turn invisible and get inside of Darkseid's head and do mental stuff to him. And 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 Dark Side's Omega effect beams go lash out with the last of it, and 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 the Golden Child's able to make Lara intangible. Why he couldn't do any of this stuff before, there's really not an explanation of. Um. Now he's able to just pretty much toy with Dark Side and take him out, and uh, <clears throat> at, at the end there's sort of some inspiring fight, and we've got Batwoman and. The protesters rising up, and that's why we'll win. That's why we'll always win. Uh, the end. This is a one-shot comic. This is it. This is the Dark Knight, the Golden Child. We just looked at it. We didn't read it, um, but uh, I did. And I, I didn't get very much out of this. Granted, 
I, and I was up front with this. I'm totally ignorant of the events of Dark Knight 2 that led up to this and all the origins of Lara Kent and this golden child and everything else. Like I didn't, I haven't read it yet. Okay. I don't, I don't know that I should have to. Maybe I should. Maybe if I read all that stuff and was an expert in it, in the the Miller, the post Dark Knight Returns, post DK2 Miller verse, this would all make perfect sense. And in fact, would be I would realize what a genius and how it was all building up to this or working on this. Or the cynical side of me says that uh, Miller was probably uh, just wanted to work with Grandpa. Grandpa probably is like, heck yeah, I want to work with Frank Miller on Dark Knight Returns sequel. Who wouldn't, right? So they worked together and they came up with a book that looks really cool, that has some currently uh, topical political stuff uh, and is maybe a little bit more of what uh, Frank Miller wanted to say than what came out in Dark Knight 2. Now, Dark Knight 2 was written by Brian Azzarello and Frank Miller, right? And uh, it's been debated how much Frank Miller actually did in this book. What's not debated is that he did the the little mini-comics that are on the inside. Like, those were done by Miller. Ooh. Um, But the comic itself... Appears to be pretty much an Azarella joint, but this what yet this one ties into it. So, guys, am I being wishy washy? Yeah. If this if Frank Miller wasn't a living legend, would he? Would I just be saying I hated this? No, I'd still be saying I really enjoyed it. I like the Raphael Grandpa artwork, even though it doesn't make sense and it like and it, it reads like a fever dream. But that's good. I like comics like that sometimes, especially when they're drawn by an artist like this. Um, it's a little bit better when the author has something to say uh, that's a little more uh, interesting, I guess, because I didn't get too much out of this that uh, uh, leads me to recommend it to you as a great piece of writing. I will recommend it to you as a nice-looking piece of Batman art uh, uh, comic. And, uh, you know... It's a it's a nice package prestige format, five ninety nine, and uh, DC Black Label, which means I'm not sure what it means anymore. Anyway, if you know what it means or have thoughts about it, talk about it in the comments below. Guys, thanks uh, for watching this, and I want to especially thank uh, you folks who do the commenting down there. In fact, somebody had a great comment that said, "What do you say? Like, live your life." Like only the hardcore are watching. And that's you guys who and gals. Whoever's watching now, you are the hardcore and I appreciate it because it's it's your support and your engagement especially that drives me on. It makes me want to do more videos and talk more about comics. Okay, coming up, I'm going to do some Miller flashback comics, right? I've got the... um, I've got the uh, facsimile edition of uh, Daredevil 181, Death of Electro, one of my all-time favorite comics. It was the back issue I got as a kid. I've got the facsimile edition. I'm going to do a video on that uh, this week, I think. And I hope you'll all watch it. Thank you for liking and commenting and subscribing. We're almost at 500. If we're not at 500 by the time this video comes out, I'll be very, very surprised because I only need two more subscribers. So um, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for engaging. Most of all, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.